Okay. Thank you, Simon. Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So I'll be presenting the Reorg China Initiative, um, which took place this past September. Uh, just to briefly introduce the mission, um, Reorg China was a two-week international workshop launched by ECROM, um, and it was in partnership with the Chinese State Administration of Cultural Heritage, um, abbreviation is SACH, and the Chinese Academy of Cultural Heritage, um, also known as CATCH. And um, so it was uh, hosted by the Wuhu Shrine Museum in Shengdu, China. And just to point out where Shengdu is on the map, um, it's west of Shanghai. And so, the Wuhu Shrine Museum was actually part of a much larger uh, temple complex. And sorry for this image, but um, if you can see down here, there's an exterior wall that um, surrounds the entire complex. And this storage area that we were dealing with was in this area over here. And the entire complex actually generates approximately three million visitors per year. And this image here is just um, the main entrance. And this white building here behind this red wall was the storage. Um, and so we had a team of lecturers that guided the workshop. And so we have Marjolin from Belgium, uh, Velko from Serbia, Gael de Guichon from France, myself, and Achelle from uh, India. And we also had each from China. And so there were 20 participants in total, 10 um, from around the world. So we had Egypt, Italy, uh, Guatemala, um, Mexico, Burkina Faso, um, Greece, Fiji, Portugal, Poland, and Nigeria. And then we had 10 participants from all, of, all across China. And so the 20 participants were divided into four teams of five, and each were led by, uh, by a coordinator. And then they were all assigned a different storage area. And so this is a floor plan of the main floor. Um, and so the green team was assigned room A and B. Uh, and in room A, it was a publications and reference library. And as you can see from these images, they had part of the furniture collection stored um, above some shelving units. And they also had objects on the floor, as you can see here, and more furniture collection. And so this was room B, which housed the pottery collection. And um, as you can see, there are more objects, uh, collection and non-collection, on the floor. Um, and there was a lot of unused shelving space. And another major issue with this was that um, the pottery collection was on wooden shel shelving units. And um, since Chengdu is in an earthquake-prone region, um, and they have suffered from earthquakes in the past, uh, it was advisable to move the collection in case uh, disaster did strike in the future. And so directly above room A on, um, on the upper floor was filled with compact shelving. And so due to the size of the room, it was actually um, split into half and two groups were assigned um, each, a section. And as you can see here, there's more objects on the floor here as well as here. And so in this first section of the compact shelving units was part of the, the pottery collection. There was uh, a coin collection as well and an assortment of other um, object types. And um, there was also furniture, more furniture collection here. And so on the other half of the room, um, behind the compact shelving, there was more, more chairs. <laughs> And um, here's a better photo of painting, framed paintings that were on the floor. And, and behind this stack here, there was also um, there were a couple of pottery, um, pottery items that were found as well. And so the final room, um, if you return back downstairs and go outside um, and go along this wall, you can actually enter this portion of the building. And this isn't the best representation, but this 
this portion of E was actually along this here. So there isn't a gap, it's, it is part of it. And so E um, continued further down. And so this was a condition in there. Um, and so it was a mix of garbage um, collection items, non-collection items, and it was extremely dusty. And as, as you can see here, there's um, an access door that was completely blocked off. And so all the teams um, began phase two of the process. They began analyzing the collection, the management, um, the building and space. Uh, they also went through and um, analyzed the furniture and the small equipment. And, um, and in this photo you can see um, that they identified collection, non-collection, and unsure items with green, red, and yellow stickers to make um, the process a bit easier. And so once they um, completed their analysis, they, they gathered together and they created um, and consolidated their information. And so um, here's the results that they found. Um, this actually isn't the museum's entire collection, but it was the focus of our project. And um, so they went through and they identified objects that did not belong in their collection. And so that made it a lot easier to kind of have an exchange market. Um, so auction off items that did not belong in their collection, but the other, collect uh, the other teams could um, kind of bid on those pieces and then incorporate them into their action plan. And so here was um, the occupation plan for um, E2, which was the exterior room. Um, and you can see collection and non-collection were mapped out. And here was the action, um, the future action plan that they, they had developed. And as you can see here, um, they closed the passageway over here. So um, they actually turned E1 into a separate storage area for other um, departments for the, for the complex. And so this here was strictly collection items. And so they opened the access um, to that door there that you saw earlier. And so before uh, beginning implementation, a number of established rules were um, developed in collaboration with the curator. And so number one was to apply the reorg quality criteria. Number two was to remove all non-collection items from the storage area. Uh, three was to avoid touching objects that were already in order. Uh, four was to regroup the specific collections that had been dispersed throughout the building. Number five was to move the objects on the floor that, um, to more adapted furniture. Uh, six was to transfer the objects to suitable furniture. And number seven was to record um, the new location for objects that already had um, a location number. And so this is kind of, this demonstrates um, where the objects were relocated. So. Um, upstairs in the first portion of the compact shelving units, there was a coin collection which was relocated to um, a, drawing, um, a drawing cabinet. Um, and then once that was done, um, the pottery collection that was in room B was brought together with the remaining pottery collection that was upstairs as well. Um, and then the furniture was relocated into room B. Um, onto the wooden shelving units. And the paintings, the framed paintings were prepared and moved to newly purchased and installed shelving units. And so in room E, um, all the non-collection was removed and heavy furniture was relocated to platforms on casters. And so this is the unit that now houses the coin collection. Here is the yellow team um, removing the pottery collection from, uh, from downstairs. And this is them uh, recording the new location and moving the objects onto the compact shelving units. And here they added these bars across just in case an earthquake did strike that they didn't fall off the shelving units. 
And so this was the green team um, demonstrating that the furniture collection could be, um, could be supported by the wooden shelving units. And so this is the before shot of that room and this is the after. Um, these paintings that were previously on the floor removed this newly purchased furniture and they also added um, some compartments here. Um, as you can see here, they, they wrapped each piece and they also labeled them as well um, for easy identification. Um, these wooden panels were found throughout, um, throughout room E and so some metal shelving was purchased and it's kind of difficult to see in this photo, but there's actually a second unit behind here. So they used the horizontal bars and, and laid, each unit, um, sorry, laid each wooden panel across instead of using the shelves. Um, and so here are the plastic platforms that were used with the casters on them. And then there were these large really really heavy boxes um, that housed paintings as well. And so here was the before shot, and this is the after. And so after 10 days, um, we left with some major changes, all thanks to the, um, the Chinese State Administration of Cultural Heritage and the Chinese Academy of Cultural Heritage, as well as the Wuhu Shrine Museum. Um, as they welcomed and supported this workshop. I'd like to thank you all for listening.